Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our Sunday school here at CCCF. This is uh, Ms. Christina Chow. Today is August 16th. I'll be going over lesson 11, Genesis chapter 21, verse 1 through 14. And this is the story of our baby Isaac. Before we start, I'd like to open with a word of prayer. So hope everybody put hands together and bow your head, close your eyes. Dear Lord, thank you so much for blessing today to worship you again. We just ask that you can please speak to each one of us and let us know whatever lesson and message you want each of us to receive. And I ask that you can continue to bless each of the um, students and their parents, family, uh, whatever need they may need, and uh, may you be glorified in our daily walk with you. And we just ask that um, you open our heart and mind as we um, go through the lesson today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so let's uh, start with the lesson. So from chap Genesis chapter 21, 1 through 14, the main truth is God is faithful to keep his promises and all happens in his timing, not our own timing. And God's timing is always the best. And I reference uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, um, verses 8 to 9. So um, the reason that uh, you see the picture of Abraham, Sarah, in this all because that's the story of um, God's promise to them. So this is where we're going to uh, learn. So let's go through chapter, starting chapter one. I'm going to read through this whole 14 verses. And uh, please um, just follow with me. And then you feel free to read it out loud as well. Chapter one. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. That's very important. It's the exact time God had promised him. And later on, I will tell you how long this timing is. Verse 3, Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah born him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. So Sarah and Abraham um, followed God's command to circumcise um, baby Isaac when he was eight days old. So this is a very common practice um, back then, and I believe um, nowadays as well. So chapter, I'm sorry, verse five. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. So imagine if this happened in today's world. It's almost impossible, right? All right, so, uh, verse six, Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh at me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. How old is Abraham? 100 years old, right? Verse eight, the child grew and was weaned. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great fist. This means a party, okay? But Sarah saw that the son who Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham was mocking. So if you remember from a couple of lessons ago, Hagar uh, born a son with Abraham too, and uh, the son's name is Ishmael. I'll talk about them later too. Okay, verse 10. And she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that woman's son would never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. This son here means Ishmael. But God said to him, do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. The son of the slave here again means Ishmael. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and skin of water and gave them to Hagar. 
He spent them on her shoulders and then set her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of um, uh, Beersheba. Beer so the outline of the lesson is um, going to break into two different sections. The first section is from uh, verse 1 through 7. Abraham and Sarah received Isaac from God by faith. Okay, this is very important. Why? Because uh, when Abraham was 75 years old, God promised to make him a father of great nation. So um, Abraham and Sarah married for many, many years, and they had always wanted to have children. But, you know, Sarah was beginning to think that she was not able to bear any kids. And so that's why um, from a couple of chapters ago, Sarah, you know, took matter into her own hands told her husband Abraham to sleep with um, her servant, Hagar, and that's how I, you know, Ishmael was born. Okay, so we know that that definitely was not God's plan. It was um, Sarah's own um, desire. But God did promise Abraham that, um, and Sarah that, you know, God will make Abraham the father, meaning that whatever um, children coming out of uh, Abraham and Sarah would be their um, would make a great nation, you know, would be their generation would be um, making a great nation of the whole world. So this happened when Abraham was 100 years old and when Sarah was already 90 years old. So imagine that they waited for 25 years. That is a long time to think about it, right? So if you put this in today's society, it's almost impossible. I, I think I don't think we have heard anybody that can bear a child um, or any mom, I actually any woman can bear a child that is 90 years old. So God carried his promise in 25 years that they God blessed them a son. So everything is possible with God, but everything happens all in God's timing. So just remember that, okay? Even, although it's very hard to believe, but God is all sovereign and he does carry his promises for you, for everybody, okay? And we know that because this is the evidence that God proved to us. He did that for Abraham and Sarah. Okay, for the second section of this, Verses from 8 to 14 uh, talks about Ishmael. Again, is the son born by Hagar, Sarah's servant. And um, the marking that uh, I was mentioned earlier in the previous, uh, in the verses here is when Sarah, I mean, Ishmael was about 8, 16 years old. And then when Isaac was about 2, 16 years old. So Sarah obviously did not like that. You know, you can imagine as a mom, they don't like other you know, making fun of um, our own kids. So Sarah told Abraham to send Hagar and Ishmael away. And um, Abraham was um, distressed because of course he also loved Ishmael as his own son. But Abraham did, uh, did this by trusting God would take care of them. Because as we read through um, verses here, right? God, Say to him, do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is for Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. And I will make the son of the slave, Ishmael, into a nation also. So see, God trusts, um, I'm sorry, Abraham trusted God that would carry off another promise. So Abraham listened to Sarah and then sent Ishmael and Hagar away. Okay? So again, that's another evidence of uh, God's promise to us. So the summary of this lesson is God always keeps his promises. And God is sovereign. He controls all things, including the timing of all things. Okay, and because God is faithful, God's promises should be received by faith. And the reason I put faith in capital letters is it's very, very important because basically, Everything we do, our speech, our action, how we behave, it is all stemmed by what kind of faith you have in God with the Lord. If your faith is strong, it will show through 
your behavior, you're shown through your action, you're shown through your interaction with other people, you will show through um, your speech, okay? And how do you be faithful to God is, again, by studying the lessons that we're doing right now, that you, we show you the proof of God's promises to Abraham and um, Sarah, that everything God promises that he will deliver. So that's how you build your faith. So you know that whatever God has promises you, uh, meaning that if you receive um, in your head, your, you know, a message that you think God has told you that he would do something for you, you have to believe that. But you have to believe that the timing of that promise will happen in God's timing, not your own time. Not always your own timing, but always in God's timing, okay? And God is faithful to bless through the promised Messiah, who is Jesus, right? Because Jesus saved everyone who has faith like Abraham. So again, this is very important why you need to have faith in the Lord. If you have faith in God, you definitely will be saved by Jesus Christ, who is your personal savior. Again, for those who doesn't know who Jesus Christ is, Jesus Christ is God, one and only son that's in human form. And God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross to redeem your sin, my sins, everybody's sins in this world. Sins that unfortunately caused by Adam and Eve at the beginning of time. And But if you have that belief that Jesus Christ is your personal savior, then you will be blessed, okay? So the very last important thing that I want to point out is both Abraham and Sarah, they trusted first what God had told them. So God told them when Abraham was 75 years old that um, God would give them a son. They believed that was going to happen. And after God granted their, uh, I mean, delivered the promise, granted them their son, then they follow whatever God's command. And one of this, again, is um, by Abraham sending Ishmael and Hagar away, knowing that God would take care of them as well. So it's very important that we also follow Abraham and Sarah footsteps. They trust the God, trust God, believe in God, and you follow God by um, following his commands, whatever he asks us to do, okay? So um, this is the memory verse for today. It's uh, very short as um, verse two. So for those of you who are um, familiar with my class, this is a five finger trick that I have always tried to adopt with uh, whatever the memory verse is. So in, this week, it just so happened that we can fit in five different, um, I would say, segments. So, if you don't mind to put your either left hand or right hand out, spreading your finger like the pictures here. And um, as we um, go over each verse, you can fold each finger down and follow by folding each finger back up, repeating the second time. And I hope that this will help you to memorize. Okay, so let's do it together. Put your finger out there. Just like the picture here, we're starting with the thumb as verse one. Okay, verse one, you put your um, finger, thumb down, verse one. Sarah became pregnant and, finger number two down, bore a son to Abraham, finger number three down, in his old age, finger number four down, at the very time, last finger down, God had promised him. So by now, your hand should be in the fist, right? So we're going to open up our hands one finger at a time and recite from verse 1 to 5 again. Okay, so let's repeat together. Thumb up. Sarah became pregnant and second finger up or a son to Abraham. Third finger up in his old age or finger up. At the very time, your finger, pinky, last one, God had promised him. 
Okay, so I hope this helps you to memorize this verse. Again, it's very short. And let me just say it again. Sarah became pregnant and born a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. Okay? So I hope you can um, memorize this and either using this five finger tri trick or any other way that will help you to uh, remember. Okay? And lastly, um, I always have some lesson questions uh, for parents that I would encourage you to, you know, work with your kid at home. Um, this is always a good way to know um, what questions that um, your children may have after, um, you know, listening to the lesson and or um, maybe any things that you need to, you feel like you need to uh, go over with them or emphasize with them. But this is, uh, to me, is a great way to find out uh, what each of the student, what they know or they do not know, okay? So that's the end of this lesson. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, let me end with uh, another word of prayer. Father God, thank you so much again for, um, your blessing for our church and also for um, each child that um, you are brought on earth here. And I ask that you can please be with them, continue to um, keep them safe and healthy. And especially um, with most of the students or some of the students um, have started going back to school. We just ask that uh, you help them to uh, adopt to the distant learning and also help the uh, parents to um, help them during this time and um, just um, keep them safe and then may your presence, may your love be filled by them. And then we ask that um, you can just bring them back safely next week to worship um, together again. In Jesus' name, we're praying all this. Everybody says, Amen. All right, thank you, and hope you guys have a great week, and God bless.